What's going on, guys? So today we're going to talk about two private quantum computer companies, Psi Quantum and Quantinuum. We're going to look at Psi Quantum's website, and then we're going to do a reaction to Quantinuum and their recent CEO interview on CNBC. On this channel, we cover a lot of publicly traded quantum companies, the likes of Vergetti, D-Wave, IonQ, but there's a lot of privately traded quantum companies that are making a big impact. And we know that Psi Quantum has actually drawn interest from NVIDIA. We've seen that NVIDIA has been in advanced talks with Psi Quantum for investment. DARPA has also selected Psi Quantum in one of its final stages of its quantum computing program. What I'd like to do today is I'd like to look at some of that news. I'd like to look at their website. I was impressed with uh, some of their website with my background in web design. I can always appreciate a really nice website. And I'd like to listen to the CEO who recently in the past two weeks went on and had a nice interview and talked about AI and quantum computing. So what I have pulled up here is the quantum computing mentions by company. And we can see that Psi Quantum is all the way over here. And we and this is just the mentions in general and their earnings reports. And this is from the quantum index report that I covered on the channel last night. And Psi Quantum is over here in this quiet little corner with giants like IBM and Google and D-Wave and NVIDIA and all of these companies that are mentioning quantum a lot and Psy Quantum's over here, just hanging out. The reason I'm putting it on the screen illustrates how many private and public companies are working on quantum computing as we speak today. So when you go over to Psy Quantum's website, one of the first things you'll notice is they are pretty forward with their language. They're saying, we're building the world's first useful quantum computing. Looks like they are working on something called Omega, a manufacturable chipset for quantum computing. And their first principles, I like how they lay this out. Psi Quantum is a quantum computing company on a mission to build and deploy the world's first useful quantum computers. Our approach is to build a utility scale, fault tolerant quantum computer, which involves photonics based architecture. And it leverages existing infrastructure to build and scale these systems. I was really impressed with their blueprint page and some of the visuals they use to illustrate some of these more complex concepts of quantum computing. So some of the initial hurdles that are hard to get past for just someone who is casually interested in this topic. So current quantum computers often require extreme and exotic cryogenic cooling and are error prone and are noisy. Useful quantum computers must be fault tolerant, error corrected and fully error corrected, capable of running known classically intractable, intractable useful algorithms and will require advances in architecture, networking and modularity and control electronics. As we scroll down the page, they talk about their wafer and wafer tests. That was a nice transition. I'm going to scroll back up. So they actually zoom in on the wafer here on the website and then they start to talk about Photonic qubits are implemented by repurposing integrated photonics technology originally developed for telecom and data center networking applications. So their single qubit fidelity is 99.99% and their two qubit is 99%. Their circuit board, their photonic chip and the optical fibers and just a very nice graphic user experience as I'm going through the site. There's a nice tactile feel and for very complex topics in advanced technology, they're doing a great job with the storytelling. They have a good research page and I just pulled up a couple articles. I know Psy Quantum is definitely a name. For, if you're close to the quantum space, you've heard Psy Quantum a lot. And I thought it's time to make a video on Psy Quantum. So DARPA in February of 2025 selected Psy Quantum to advance to the final phase of the quantum computing program. And Psy Quantum has successfully completed the development of the viability phase of the de defense. Psy Quantum has successfully completed the research and development viability phase of the DARPA under explored systems for utility scale quantum computing program. 
So a nice nod from DARPA there. Not just a nod, but they're moving into the final phase. So a lot of credibility and validity there. This one is more recent. So in just less than a month ago, we saw that NVIDIA in their big shift in quantum computing and their rhetoric, we remember back in January, we were hearing from NVIDIA that quantum computing was 15 or 20 years away. And now as recently as five months later, what a little bit of time has done is now NVIDIA is talking about investing directly in this private company, Quantum. So NVIDIA is reportedly in advanced talks to invest in Quantum as part of a $750 million funding round led by BlackRock, marking its first direct investment in quantum hardware and potentially valuing the company at nearly $6 billion. Quantum aims to build a million qubit photonic quantum computer by 2028. And every time I read these milestones and benchmarks, it just seems like that those years are drawing closer where you're seeing 2029, 2028 often in a lot of these articles. The potential investment aligns with NVIDIA's broader quantum strategy, which includes simulation software, hybrid system frameworks, and public-private research initiatives in response to limits in classical computing performance. That's funny here. Well, that was a quick 20 years. NVIDIA is reportedly in advance talks to invest in photonic quantum computing startup Quantum, a move that would mark the chip maker's first direct bet on hardware qubits and a signal shift in its long-term outlook for the field. So this has created a lot of tailwinds in the quantum sector because of NVIDIA's, basically their tone shift. Suddenly, it's not 15 years, 20 years away. Suddenly, we're investing millions of dollars now in this technology. And it, it's, it was a very wise tone shift from NVIDIA as they are a tech company and a lot of these tech companies are exposed if quantum computing is to take off in a meaningful way, it could become a direct competitor to NVIDIA. All right, so now we are getting to the React portion of this video. The CEO of Quantinuum on the future of AI and quantum computing space and Rajib Hazra, CEO of Quantinium, is on CNBC discussing the future of AI and quantum computing. So let's have a listen. In a minute, you got a lot of big name customers, NVIDIA, JP Morgan Chase. Uh, also a recent study came out that showed you had the most powerful <coughs> quantum computer, but I don't think a lot of people know what that really means. What does it really mean to have the most powerful quantum computer and how do these big name customers use your tech? That's a great question, great to be here. The most powerful quantum computer is essentially just that. The power is in what it allows users to do. So out of 19 available quantum computers, a third party uh, benchmarked us as having the most powerful quantum computer in terms of the kind of complex algorithms and problems you can solve on it. And I'll Just quickly pausing here, these are some really big names. NVIDIA, SoftBank, Amgem, Honeywell, BMW. Th these are partnerships of Quantinuum. How effectively you can write algorithms for it. Mm -hmm. So it's both in terms of the outcomes it can generate and the productivity with what it can. Now that was on our H1 and H2 computers. H2 is by, by relative terms old. Okay. The one we are going to release in a few months is up to a trillion times, that's with a T, more powerful than the H2. So that train is accelerating exponentially. All right. I made sure to call you Dr. Hazard because you... And we're seeing similar rhetoric from the likes of IonQ and other companies that are working on gate-based is not... This isn't a linear progression. This isn't an iPhone 10 to an iPhone 11. This is like going from a Motorola Razor to an iPhone 17, but in like a couple months. So there's an exponential curve happening here and we're seeing it. And we just have to kind of put those clues together as this unfolds before us. You know a lot more about this than most people do. You're getting a bit technical. So we just showed the customers again, uh, JP Morgan, BMW, NVIDIA, uh, Honeywell, the company that you spun off from. So give us an example what this super powerful quantum computer can do for an enterprise right now. You can use Honeywell, you can use any other customers. 
Yeah. In addition to those customers you just named, we have a broad set of customers across the end markets of transportation, energy, bio and pharma, supply chains. What they essentially do, what quantum computers allow you to do is two things. One is do things more efficiently, solve larger problems, more complex data problems, uh, more efficiently, as we all know that it takes for classical compute more and more energy and space. Mm -hmm. So quantum computing is a paradigm shift to look at more data more quickly, simultaneously. The second thing it does is the most, and probably the more exciting part is it unlocks AI. Quantum computers generate data about processes that are commonplace, yet we cannot model them very effectively with classical compute. And so what it does is it takes generative AI, this tremendous engine, and gives it the training that it needs to solve problems, whether it's discovering a new material, whether it's discovering a new drug, whether okay. it's actually coming up with a solution to an optimization problem. So it's the power of AI plus quantum, which is the other big part of what a quantum computer okay. can do. Often overlooked in this conversation and one of the arguments that I see all the time against quantum and quantum computing, the hardware isn't there, that the, these are, are useless. There's no reason for this. While the quantum computers are being built and we're seeing this evolution and this rapid advance in the technology, we're also in this exponential increase in the power of artificial intelligence. So now you're pairing a more powerful and more potent compute model with more powerful, increasingly more powerful AI, and we're seeing uh, in, and we're hearing it here that the possibilities, materials discovery, optimization, all kinds of things, it's opening doors that we didn't even think were possible even five years ago, even six months ago. That's uh, what our customers are doing. By the way, I want to mention your company has about a $5 billion valuation, maybe even higher. It was a, it was a pre-cash valuation after your last um, investment. Rich. A lot of excitement around the quantum space right now, just in general. So one other thing I want to ask you about. A lot of times we talk about AI possibly replacing search. When we're looking at quantum computing, what does it mean for cybersecurity? Yesterday, we saw two of the most popular cybersecurity ETFs hit all-time highs or uh, high since their inception, I believe. A lot of people say that quantum computing is going to make cybersecurity, I guess, more difficult. Well, there's two ways to look at it. Most people have looked at early on that, that quantum computers become the attacker. But as we've seen, powerful quantum computers are also the solution to that. We actually have a product out there, it's been out there for two years, that helps you use the power of a quantum computer to encrypt things mm -hmm. more securely. Encryption is the basis of guarding all your assets. And so what we think, now particularly with standardization happening around the algorithm space, is we finally get to a point of post-quantum safety. Mm -hmm. That is, our cyber infrastructure will be the most, the, the, the most resilient it can be by using the most powerful form of compute to protect it. All right, we were just showing the uh, board just a second ago, showing some of the stock moves, some quantum stocks and the ETF, some pretty outsized moves, at least over the last month. Before that, a lot of volatility. Um, I think a lot of people would like to know where we stand when it comes to quantum computing. Are we racing against other countries like China for when it comes to quantum computing? Are we in the lead? Are we in second place? Where are we at? So that's a great question. Uh, it is absolutely true that the run up in, in the quantum stocks is a clear sign that quantum computing is real. We've had this debate for a while over the last two, three years. That debate has ended. It is not real. It is starting to solve real commercial problems, and it is the pathway to the future of computing. Someone needs to show this video to Martin. We are seeing investment in excess of $45 billion worldwide. And we are participating in it by governments to build national quantum ecosystems like the one we recently announced in Qatar. But where's the U.S. at? I know you're doing deals with, with uh, Qatar. The interviewer is giving some really sharp questions here. And I love the idea. Basically, what he's saying is there the debate is over. There's real value today with quantum computing. Now it's how valuable and how much speed up and how much optimization. It's not a question of if, it's a question of how much. And it's like a billion dollars, I believe, over the next 10 years. But where is the U.S. stand right now? We're always wringing our hands about the AI race. 
where are we at in the quantum race, which seems like the next leg of this whole thing. I love quantum this is the next opportunity for the United States. And we are encouraged to see a go back to a focus on national competitiveness, onshoring supply chains, robust supply chains. And I'm really looking forward to the bipartisan support on the National okay. Quantum Initiative reauthorization bill, which actually takes fundamental research in quantum and parlays it into commercial application and leadership for but, the United but States. But Dr. Hesler, I gotta say, you're not answering. We gotta go. Are we in the lead? Are we behind? Where are we at? We gotta invest more deliberately <laughs> and at greater levels okay. to get up on the leaderboard on leading in terms of dollars. But there's a lot more we can do by investing in supply chains, okay. workforce, as well as other areas. Yeah, the interviewer presses him for an answer and the unfortunate possible answer is we're not the only player. The U.S. isn't the only player in this race. And we don't fully know exactly. We know that China is currently outspending the U.S. on this front. And we know that Europe has some programs. But the main concern, and I think why we're seeing that Rajiv here has not given a direct answer, is because there is certainly some concern that China is spending way more and is ahead at this point in time. Yes that'll continue to keep our compute leadership in the world. I also like how Rajib says that quantum computing is a huge opportunity for the US and to get into this competitive mindset where we are building the best machines and we are a leader in this space. So this was a really fun interview and react to do. If they're able to deliver on increasingly powerful machines, and to keep solving some of the hardest problems in the world that were not even conceivable to be solved on a normal computer even five to 10 years ago. The value of that to society, to enterprises, to businesses, I think these companies are going to continue to increase in value. And while this is a private company and it's not easy to directly invest in them, it does paint a picture of where quantum is and where it's going and why so many investors have been interested in buying early in these companies. Anyway, if you appreciate content like this, please leave a like or a subscribe. That's all I got for today. Hope you found this insightful and helpful. We'll talk to you soon.